Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today I want to take you guys through the new interim report number three that we got just hours ago, guys. If you did not know, head on over to meribium.com and check out the uh, the updates and listen through uh, for my thoughts, predictions, and feelings about this. Uh, um, you know, updated uh, information. For those of you who don't know, this information is regarding the new Doctor Strange update that we're going to be getting uh, later on at the end of this month or at the beginning of next month. It hasn't been confirmed yet. A lot of people are speculating that it could drop on the Tuesday, October 25th, which would be pretty cool and pretty close from now. Not too far off. But other people are speculating it could be the 26th, the next day, the Wednesday, because that is when Doctor Strange comes out in Korea but it could also just be another day. It could actually come uh, after Halloween because as of uh, this moment, we do have the Halloween Green Goblin, Norman Osborn, uh, you know, Brady, Bench, Brady Bunch family uh, event going on with the tokens until the end of the month, until the 31st, uh, which is Halloween. So uh, it's, 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 not un it's not unlikely, it's not super likely, but it's not unlikely that this actually pushes the uh, Doctor Strange update into November, which I know people don't want to hear. But thankfully, in the meantime, we do have some more information trickling out from Netmarble. And it looks like we're getting even more than just the Doctor Strange patch and the uh, hard mode alliance battle, which is what we had previously confirmed, as well as, of course, the eight new characters and four new uh, uniforms. So let's check out what we're getting. Um, we are getting these new features called Shadowland King of the Hill. So I know that Shadowland is very, very new for uh, the majority of the of the player base, and for a lot of people, it's still very difficult to, um, you know, compete at a high level in Shadowland to get past stage 20. But unfortunately, or f fortunately, uh, there are some players, myself included, who uh, can already get to stage 25 of Shadowland. It took me just two weeks to do that, and it took a lot of people, some people in my alliance, and some people, a lot of people in other alliances, I guess, uh, not too much time to figure it out. Or if you have like 20 tier twos, it took you like no time at all. So they're gonna be introducing this uh, King of the Hill mode for Shadowland, which sounds pretty interesting by the by the words of it, I guess. Uh, basically, what'll happen is uh, when you get to stage 25, um, presuming someone's gotten there before you, uh, after you beat Daredevil, you're gonna have to fight um, someone else. Now, it's it's they haven't said uh, very much else other than that. So basically, they say you get to be the final boss in a King of the Hill mode. Smack down your opponents as they try to take what is yours. Your throne must be protected. So it's kind of unclear as of right now what that means. Um, I don't think the characters in this splash page are really uh, important or hold hold weight. I think they're just characters that they chose. You know, the three on the left are kind of Civil War type characters. The three on the right are obviously from, uh, the, you know, the Daredevil Hell's Kitchen um, Harlem uh, universe, which is the same universe, but just different parts of the world. Anyways, um, and then they say here, in order to take the throne, you must clear all 25 floors before you can challenge the current king. So it's a little bit vague because the current king um, could be anyone. And so there's a couple of ways this could this could go down theoretically. So theoretically, if you have three pl three players playing and, uh, you know, person A beats Shadowland Floor 25 first out of everyone in the world playing the game as soon as the reset happens. Keep in mind, this won't happen on this week's reset for Shadowland, guys. This Shadowland update is tied to the Doctor Strange update, so this will only be relevant and live when the Doctor Strange stuff comes out, in which case we'll probably have more exciting things to talk about. But anyways, let's talk about it now and let's get our predictions and our thoughts in while, while it's still hot, while the, the, you know, the pot is still cooking and the oil is still simmering there. So uh, there is one scenario that I'm describing now when you have A, B, and C players. So player A is the very first player in the world to beat Shadowland Floor 25. They become, they get installed as the Shadowland King of the Hill. And they have to like submit one of the characters that they have left in their roster that hasn't already beaten one of the previous 25 stages to then be the king, the, you know, the quote unquote Air Bunnies King of the Hill. Then person B beats Shadowland a minute later, beats Shadowland 20, Floor 25 a minute later then he will see person A's selected character as the um, as the one to beat. And then person C beats it, you know, three minutes later. And then whether, uh, you know, person A retained the throne when person B attacked, or if person B attacked and beat person A, then uh, person C would see either person A or person B. 
This is starting to sound a lot like a math equation, guys, so I really don't like it. I'm going to fuck off with this analogy, but you kind of get what I'm saying. Um, to me personally, I don't think that's, way, that's the way it's going to go down because it just it kind of seems too wild and chaotic, especially with time zone differences and stuff like that. And it just seems like the person at the top could change from when you enter the, the, the battle. Like, you know, if I enter the battle and some guy, some Korean guy's Shirag is at the top, maybe partway through my battle with him, even though I'm winning, somebody else beats him with their carnage. Then does my battle get, is, is my battle null and void because the carnage beat the Shirag before I beat the Shirag with my tier two uh, Electra? You know, so what I think is actually gonna happen is I think uh, the, the King of the Hill is gonna look something similar uh, to um, the, the world, not the world boss, sorry, similar to Battle World or similar to Timeline. And basically, um, Maybe uh, at the beginning we'll all start with a thousand points, and then it, you know everyone who beats Shadowland Stage 25 will be able to put up a character as their as their king of the proverbial hill, and then you'll have you know X or Y number of tries or number of like entries to try and kill other people's kings of the hill or queens of the hill, I guess if you want to go that way, uh, or if you're the destroyer, then neutral gender neutral pronouns of the hill. Uh, and then if you win, you get X number of points. If you lose, you get Y number of points, or maybe you just get negative points. And then uh, at the end of the week, the person with the most points from the King of the Hill will be declared the winner, the MVP of the Hill. Uh, and then they will uh, get some like prize, maybe some Nordstones, maybe some Crystals, maybe some BAM, who knows. Uh, that's probably the way they're going to do it. Hopefully they don't have like a recharge system like in Timeline where you can pay for more entries because then that would kind of make the King of the Hill pretty broken and pretty uh, encouraging to uh, pay to pay to win characters and pay to win players. So hopefully they don't do that. But I'm that's what I'm honestly imagining is going to be the scenario where we basically um, can refresh to get a different opponent. Maybe we have to pay some gold. Maybe we don't get to refresh and we just have to stick with our opponent. Or we have a set number of re refreshes like with uh, Battle World. And then if we win, we rank up as a higher rank of King of the Hill. Um, and I think maybe they'll probably have a leaderboard for that as well. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't have a leaderboard. So I'm pretty excited for that. And I'm excited to take part in it and see uh, how challenging it really is. And it will kind of be like a small extension of the Alliance tournaments in a way. Because it's, it'll be a more cutthroat, um, you know, top 1% of player PvP. Um, Vibranium is not even that you know, uh, cut off from the free to play world. I do know free to play players who can get into vibranium quite easily. So I don't think that's a really, uh, a true test of the whales, uh, girth and strength and, and weight. So, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that this Shadowlands King of the Hill is going to be pretty, um, pretty full of, of heavy hitters and heavy contenders with, you know, those five second invincibility obelisks, lots of defense penetration and, uh, some pretty janky broken ass cards and characters like Shirag. So I look forward to that. Um, as well, guys, we are getting an update to the Black Order characters. So all of the Black Order characters, I'm talking St. Thomas, uh, Sister Proxima, uh, you know, Mother, uh, Mother Supergiant, uh, Brother, um, Brother Corvus, uh, uh, Father uh, fucking Father Ma, and, uh, you know, Gary Coleman. They're all going to get their Tier 2 passive skills. So of course, guys, if you didn't already know, the Black Order characters are by default at tier two. They all, they already have that gold and blue um, little icon in the corner of their character portrait, but they don't have an additional passive. They just have their four star passive that they get when they get to four stars, when they get to the rank four. Uh, they don't have a tier two passive that all the other characters do. Now, of course, people speculated that they would never get one because in actuality, most of the Black Order characters are more powerful than most Tier 2 characters already. Uh, however, I guess Netmarble didn't feel that, that was the case or they felt like it wasn't really fair to, you know, work so hard for these characters and then they have less, you know, uh, uniqueness or less uh, development, uh, you know, in terms of what the character can do as other uh, non-Black Order characters. So they're going to be given uh, all of the Black, they're going to be giving all the Black Order characters their Tier 2 passive skills. Um, and they say here, do not fear these foes, for their skills will bring them just a little closer to their world boss equivalents. So what that's probably trying to say is that these are not going to be really powerful tier 2 passives like 5 second immunity on your 6 star skill or, um, you know, something like that. It's not going to be like 87% guaranteed dodge when you hit someone. 
Um, I think it'll probably some be something along the lines of, for example, uh, Proxima could have something like, you know, 10% uh, chance when attacking to paralyze for three seconds. That's similar to um, Yellow Jacket's leadership, and it's also similar to basically what happens when you get stun locked by Proxima when she gets that giant uh, yellow testicle roaming, roaming around her arena, that giant, you know, kind of nebulous ball. It's kind of transparent. Um, when that thing starts bouncing around in the in her third stage, that might be what it is. Or maybe, you know, th there's, a, there's a couple of things that they can do, but I'm pretty sure a lot of the uh, Tier 2 passives are going to be pretty... Um, pretty tame and they're just going to be like very small on hit or when hit triggered effect maybe a small attack boost for some of the weaker um tier, uh, weaker black order characters like maybe um super giant will have like a, a small dodge buff when she gets hit or something maybe um uh a black dwarf will have a bleed effect on most of his skills uh with a percent chance to be applied uh, I don't think it's going to be uh, game-breaking because the Black Order characters are already among the strongest in the game, and I don't think Netmarble is going to beef them up even further. But there is something that we can kind of... Well, we shouldn't necessarily infer it, but I'm going to infer something from this. Um, aside from the fact that it's not really fair that Black Order characters don't have their Tier 2 passive, I do think that uh, they're giving them their Tier 2 passive because I think more difficult content is coming, and I think that more difficult content is coming in the form of these epic quests for Doctor Strange, uh, the Doctor Strange update. So I think that uh, to reflect the, the, the cranked up difficulty, they're giving the Black Order characters just a little bit of a nudge because in their testing so far, they've probably found that, you know, Super Giant and Black Dwarf just really don't cut it uh, enough, even, even though they're max rank. So they want to give them just a little bit more. And you'll probably see that in the weighting of the, the Black Order character Tier 2 passives. Probably the worst Black Order characters or the weakest ones will get the best passives. And then Thanos and Proxima and Corvus will probably get the weakest ones or the most insignificant ones. Because I'm pretty sure they can already hang with the big boys. Uh, but that's just my speculation, guys. Let me know what you guys think, of course. And then lastly, guys, we are getting um, con confirmation that these new epic quests that we're getting for the Doctor Strange stuff is not just a new storyline, but there will be more for you to do in order to complete the journey and end your epic quest. So that wording, although like super fucking vague, and I got to give it to Netmarble, they do release pretty juicy patch notes or patch hints that are almost non-existent hints they're almost they're almost non-hints they're almost like red herrings um so what i guess that means is that it's not just going to be your typical uh you know pay x energy for y mission and play it and beat the boss and then collect something uh it seems like there's going to be more that you have to do whether it's like a puzzle mode or an endurance mode or some kind of like Maybe you have to, there's a recipe system and you have to combine certain ingredients that you get from certain epic quests to make like keys or to make like, to open new portals to get to different missions. There's a whole, there's a whole like, you know, salad and croutons worth of ideas that they could, they could do with that. But I think that just the wording um, is probably indicative of the fact that, or of the, of the idea that, or the hint of the idea that we're getting something brand new. Um, is anything I'm doing brand new? Um... So I'm really, really excited for that, even though I know basically nothing about it, because uh, anytime Netmarble releases new content for this game, even though it might initially be extremely difficult, it always ends up being uh, very, very fun and rewarding. You know, Shadowlands is a very good example of that. And if they're basically telling us that we're getting another brand new, fresh, uh, you know, out of the box, uh, BNIB uh, mode, right after Shadowlands in the form of this Doctor Strange update, I cannot be happier, guys. I'm super, super fucking excited, uh, and I hope you are too. So let me know what you guys think of this update. Let me know especially what your predictions are for the Black Order Tier 2 passives. I know I have some ideas bouncing around in my head, and uh, what you think these epic quests are going to be. Um, if anyone's familiar with the other popular games that Netmarble has, like Seven Nights, uh, if if they've, if they I'm specifically probably speaking to, to any Korean people who are on my channel, um, if you know uh, of a similar type of quest that they have in those games, 
Uh, it would be really cool if you could let us know in the comments because maybe we can glean some information off that. Not that not I'm not necessarily saying that it's going to be the exact same thing copy and pasted, but you know the design teams, although they're different for the two games, I imagine they might have some shared trajectory and where they want to take the game, and that could lead to some interesting, uh, you know discussions or to some interesting conclusions that we could draw based on what they've already done in an older net marble produced game like seven nights uh, so that's just a thought that I had guys when I was making the video hey guys just wanted to mention as an aside I am gonna be streaming again on twitch uh, this coming Friday October 21st at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time so uh, if you want to check it out you can uh, follow the link as it's shown or you can check out the description where I'll have a link for it in, uh, in the videos and uh, you know, I would appreciate it if you guys can check out the stream. I understand if you can't, and uh, if you got some your mom's or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your dog's phone uh, available when you're watching the stream, you know, load it up on their phone, load it up on their on their laptop, on their tablet, on their John Hancock, and, and get those extra views in, guys, because it all it all helps. It's all supportive. So I really appreciate it, guys, and I hope to see you uh, on that platform uh, very soon. Anyways, guys, let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think, and of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.